Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to break down how Pep Guardiola won the tactical battle over Zidane to help Manchester City advance to the Champions League quarterfinal. When we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have both sides starting in a 4-3-3. And the only real surprises here was the inclusion of Rodrigo on the right-hand side of the Real Madrid attack and Phil Foden starting up front for Manchester City with Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling out in the wider areas. So in today's video, we're going to briefly break down the key tactical themes in this game. And first, we'll start with Manchester City's pressing. With Sergio Ramos unavailable, they looked to press high from the front to force Real Madrid into some mistakes. And what we ended up seeing was that you had Phil Foden sitting on Casemiro. You had Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling pressing the center backs and blocking off the passing lanes into the fullbacks in Furlan Mendy and Carvajal. And that would leave a midfield battle of Gundogan stepping into the path of Luka Modric and Kevin De Bruyne stepping into the path of Toni Cruz. That does leave Rodri free in that midfield zone, but there were times where we did see Phil Foden step out into the path of Rafael Varane, and that would see Rodri step out into the path of Casemiro. And there were also times when Modric and Cruz looked to drop off deeper to get on the ball, and that would task Phil Foden to close them down and press, and you would see Rodri step out into the path of Casemiro. There were times where you had Foden stepping into the path of Varane with Carvajal being marked out by Gabriel Jesus, which we can also say about City's press was that Gabriel Jesus and Sterling were very disciplined. For instance, if you had Gabriel Jesus stepping out into the path of Varane, if he was able to slide the ball out to Carvajal, Jesus would recover his positioning to close down the Real Madrid right back. And if we assess an example of Sterling's discipline, you could look to the time when Tony Cruz dropped off a bit deeper and you had Phil Foden step into his path with Sterling tucking in a bit narrow. So while many will categorize it as uncharacteristic defensive mistakes from Real Madrid's backline, it was Guardiola's pressing that did force them into these issues. What you saw for the build-up to City's opener was you had Sterling blocking off the passing lane into Mendy and closing down Militao, which forced him to play the ball into the path of Courtois, and you ended up seeing Sterling continue that press, and that's where the ball was played out into the path of Varane. Gabriel Jesus applies the pressure, and he's able to dispossess him, and then play the ball back for Sterling to put City ahead. We witnessed Gundogan stepping into the path of Casemiro in Madrid zone and forcing Casemiro to poke the ball into Sterling blocking off the passing lane into Mendy and even when you look to the build up to City's winner, yes it does involve an individual mistake from Rafael Varane but that mistake doesn't happen if Gabriel Jesus isn't applying pressure to the Real Madrid center back who does not a loose ball into the path of the Brazilian and he makes no mistake by finishing beyond on Courtois. So as you can see, City's pressing did play a decisive role in this result, but it was also the manner in which Guardiola adjusted his side with Phil Foden up front, looking to create midfield overloads in that center of the pitch. So when you look at how Madrid looked to approach the game without the ball, you ended up seeing Tony Cruz stepping forward on a consistent basis to look to close down Fernandinho, and then sometimes you would have Casemiro stepping into the path of Rodri. Rodri would look to drop off deeper to receive the ball and make it 3v2 so that Taz Benzema and Cruz with blocking off his passing lane and as that game continued you did see Luka Modric stepping out to apply pressure with those two players to try and squeeze Manchester City into their own half. Ultimately City were fine with Cruz stepping out into the path of Fernandinho because what you end up seeing here now is that you have Kevin De Bruyne free in space behind Cruz and then you have Foden dropping off into those deeper zones to occupy that center of the pitch. So with Madrid not applying a cohesive press and Luka Modric and Cruz higher up the pitch, that allows space for Foden and Kevin De Bruyne to receive the ball, and ultimately that left Casemiro overloaded. When we look to one example, you have Rodri sliding the ball across Luka Modric into the path of Foden, dropping off into that gap ahead of Casemiro, and that ultimately leads to Fernandinho sliding a ball across Eden Hazard for Kevin De Bruyne receiving the ball to the left of Tony Cruz. When we look to another example, it starts with Laporte on the ball and we end up seeing Cruz and Modric step into the path of Rodri and Gundogan. When the ball is shifted out into the path of Cancelo, you see Modric shift into that zone, leaving Gundogan free. And you also see Phil Foden dropping off ahead of Casemiro into that midfield zone. 
So when Fernandinho receives the ball that does attract Cruz and Hazard, and Fernandinho splits them both to find Rodri now free in that midfield zone, and he plays a forward pass in between the lines for De Bruyne, but when De Bruyne plays the pass into the path of Sterling, he fails to test Courtois. When we look to another example, it starts with Rodri in that midfield zone unmarked, and he ends up sliding the ball across Benzema into the path of Phil Foden, dropping off into that midfield zone to pull out Tony Cruz. That eventually leads to Laporte getting on the ball, but Laporte is able to clip a long ball into the path of Kevin De Bruyne, free between the lines once again, and he nods the ball into the path of Phil Foden, who's already ahead of Tony Cruz, and he's able to charge forward and slide the ball once again in between that gap between Militao and Mendy for Raheem Sterling who's able to get beyond both in the box but when Casemiro makes a last ditch tackle he ends up slipping and falling. But now let's shift to Real Madrid. Although they did struggle against City's pressing, there were moments in that opening half, specifically when City dropped off a bit deeper into a 4-5-1, where they were able to create chances. When you look at Real Madrid's initial setup, they did have Hazard and Rodrigo wide, and City did a very good job of looking to cope with that Eden Hazard threat by having Rodri shift over to apply cover for Kyle Walker, and Kevin De Bruyne did track back Granted, there was a scare in that opening half when Hazard was closed down 1v3 against Walker, Rodri, and Sterling, where Hazard was able to split Rodri and Walker to find Benzema ahead of the center backs, and he was able to gain a yard on Laporte and force Ederson into a save. The biggest issue with Real Madrid's attack was that there was no link between the midfield and Benzema due to City's pressing, and while we ended up seeing Real Madrid try to play long balls in those gaps between the center backs and the center backs and the full backs for for Benzema, ultimately Zidane did need to shift his attacking structure. He had Rodrigo and Hazard shift laterally into narrow positions so the fullbacks could push forward. So now there was an outlet for diagonal balls to be played, but it also helped Hazard receive the ball closer to Benzema between the lines. On separate occasions, we saw Modric and Cruz drop off into deeper positions away from Foden. The first time you ended up seeing Rodri shift into the path of Hazard to ensure that he couldn't link with Benzema and the other time when Modric was able to find Hazard between the lines he was stepped into by Laporte however Zidane's slight modifications didn't improve Real Madrid's productivity around that final third area so when we break down Karim Benzema's equalizer we witnessed the three key elements to his game you end up seeing the ball switched out into the path of Rodrigo and Gundogan shifting over to provide cover for Cancelo and that's when you see Benzema dropping off deeper to receive the ball from Rodrigo and he instantly shifts it out to Carvajal. And then the ball ends up being dropped off into the path of Benzema, which attracts pressure from Gundogan and Rodri. Benzema is able to split those two players with a penetrative pass to find Rodrigo. From there, you instantly see Benzema ghosting into the box away from the pressure of Rodri and Laporte. And all Rodrigo needs to do is loft that ball in towards the six-yard box. And that's where you see Benzema, goal side of Fernandinho, nod that cross beyond Ederson. So as you can see, you have Benzema dropping off to serve as the link. He ends up receiving the pass back from Carvajal to provide as the creator and split those two players to find Rodrigo. And then he breaks freely in towards the box to serve as Real Madrid's goal scorer. Meanwhile, when we looked at the second half, we ended up seeing Guardiola adjust his front line to what we expected. Gabriel Jesus started from the center of the pitch. We ended up seeing Sterling to the left and fought into the right. But when we look in the manner in which both sides were able to create chances, the one thing that we can say is that both sides did allow the opposing midfield time and space on the ball, but there was no real significant change in the manner in which they got into good positions. For instance, you look to Kevin De Bruyne of receiving the ball in a deeper position, no pressure on him. He's able to split Modric and Casemiro and Carvajal and Varane for Sterling breaking in beyond Carvajal. And then we could look to Real Madrid's disjointed pressing once again. It's Fernandinho being able to push forward as Benzema doesn't get across. He's able to locate a gap between Cruz and Casemiro for Gabriel Jesus dropping deeper to pull out Varane. Gabriel Jesus does a very good job 
job of linking play with Gundogan. And when Gundogan receives the ball, he ends up sliding it out into the path of Rodri, who's also free. So you have these City midfielders free, and you also have Kevin De Bruyne manipulating the space that Varane leaves vacant to run across Militao and dart into that gap between Militao and Carvajal to receive the ball from Rodri. On the other hand, when you look to Guardiola's second half adjustment, now you have Foden and Sterling ensuring that Mendy and Carvajal can't push forward. But what we saw from Foden was that he did adopt a narrow position in that midfield bank that tried to stay compact to prevent Real Madrid from playing through those lines. So you had Foden closer to Kevin De Bruyne and it did look like they were trying to swarm and limit Tony Cruz's impact from that midfield zone. But it did create a gap for Mendy to push forward. What we often saw in the early stages of that second half was that it was Luka Modric and Rafael Varane pushing forward and playing cross field passes into the path of Mendy. But as you can see, while Real Madrid's attacking limitations were on full display, you have to give Guardiola credit here for his tactical approach. The decision to press from the front in that designed manner did force Real Madrid into a mistake that led to the opening goal, and Gabriel Jesus' persistence in that second half led to their second goal. And what you also can say is that Phil Foden's movement into that center of the pitch created 4v3 overloads, and you ended up seeing City get into very good positions through that movement. Real Madrid did have a few openings when City weren't applying pressure, and that is an issue that Gordon Yola does have to look on as they progress through this tournament but as you look at that overall tie in both legs Guardiola got his tactics right and Man City were fully deserving of advancing to the quarterfinal. Hi everybody thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show and if that wasn't enough don't forget you could find more organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast the best soccer slash football podcast in the world available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker and any Android apps on your Android devices.